Um, and she's been in 2021. Um, she is in rural health and the impact of service delivery in these areas. On a personal I don't know what happened there. Cool. Okay, so. Oh, no worries. Okay. okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Nicole Blush, and I'm so honored to be here. I believe consultant my talk. I have three aspects. One is to discuss hypoxic oh. And the third one is to discuss how myelopathy, often as decreased oxygen to the brain, is so much more than that. Many patients will come back and their moms will say, oh no, the baby had decreased oxygen to the brain. And that is true in part, but it is so much more. So we need to define it as an acute brain injury that occurred, that is characterized by neonatal encephalopathy and evidence of intrapartum hypoxia. So we need to look at those three characteristics for neonatal encephalopathy. We need to look at the level of consciousness. It might not just be a baby that's listening. Our most important one is suck. It's not going to live. And that's empathy. And then we need to be able to define hypox an actual intrapartum hypoxic event. It's important to look at our maternal factors, which can be an acute intrapartum event, such as a massive seizure or massive um, antipartum bleed. Then we need to look at our CTG. We need to look for fetal bradycardias, reduced variability, late decelerations. What's important and often not noted is meconium stained Michael. We need to assess this because this shows that the baby is actually undergoing stress in utero. And the darker it is, the more stressed this child is. Thank you. 
multiple system <laughs> almost chaos is that you have work from the environment as a fetus of anorexia Okay. Obviously, this is a bit more.
normal saline is And if you have a 10% dextro solution or neonate, or a nursery database. But again, every APGARs are goals for how to improve the child's outcome. So please never underscore. And then again, do your ABCs, your secretions and meconium, look for breathing problems, look for circulation problems. So that's great, Nicole, but why does this matter? Because HIE in developed countries are 1.5 per thousand births. 2.3 to 26%, and this is a great, it's a great difference per thousand births in developing countries. In South Africa, 8.5 to 13 births are, um, will usually have a child that has HIE. And our mortality is 71%. Seven in hundred cases, but six and our occupational therapist and George, um, we love them very much. Um, Delivered. I found that most of the children have severe. Um, sorry, have severe um, problems. Okay, so our cooling criteria. So we want to cool babies and we want to cool their physiological responses. Our heart beats per minute, um, or 10 beats per minute, 10 beats per Celsius um, decline. There's gonna be shivering and they look so cute when they shiver. Peripheral constriction. And then our very adverse effects are coagulopathy, sepsis and hypertension. And this is usually an indication to stop cooling. We need to have three components that we that we need to fulfill to cool the patient because we don't want those adverse effects. So A, we need to have a baby that's more, more than two kilograms, more than 36 weeks with no gross congenital cardiorespiratory complications. Then B, we need to prove that there's intrapartum hypoxia. Again, that would be on a blood gas. And then you can look at your five-minute APGAR. And then 
for moderate or severe, you can look at an AEG, which most places don't have. We don't have that. And your most important is your Thompson score. So your Thompson score is lovely because it looks at all the elements that we looked at for neonatal encephalopathy, and then you score appropriately. Again, don't be scared to underscore. If the baby doesn't have a great morrow, the baby doesn't have a great morrow. have this machine, which is wonderful, and it drops the temperature quite quickly within six hours, and then reheats the baby after 72. And it's a blanket. It looks like a massive gel mat, and, we, and it works quite well. But it's also very easy to stop cooling in this machine. However, we do live in South Africa. So seagull gel packs. <laughs> so this works beautifully as well. Usually you have four packs, two around the head and two around the body and at four degrees. So if you have a freezer and you have a local spa, you can buy gel packs. You need to have a rectal probe and then you need to aim for a temperature of 33.5 to 34. And the most important part, turn off the radiant warmer. Okay. So our goals of therapy are confirmed by multiple studies, and we're quite happy with that. And then the goals of cooling, like we have said, we want a healthy baby and a mom. Also, what's important is within the 72 hours of cooling, we have a chance to empower a mom and a community. So as doctors and as allied health services and as sisters, we need to be, use this time to counsel the, the parents during this. Okay, now to George. Go, George. Um, um, so, between November 2019 and June 2022, the district had 9,497 births. 8,434 were above two kilograms. So, these would be babies that qualify for cooling if they, became, if they were an HIE baby. 75 babies were born. So, we had 8.8 .8 babies per thousand, which is in keeping um, South African statistics. And inpatient deaths were 17. So that means that we had 78 patients that we need, to, or 78% of these babies that we needed to follow up long term. Um, and our system works quite well, but we often miss patients, and we still do, we still have children that develop severe CP. But it was good to know that as an inpatient, our stats for keeping a baby alive were quite good but still devastating. These are just our centers and where the patients are referred from. Um, most of the patients actually made, made it in time for cooling. However, 22 babies were not cooled. I'm gonna focus on the top two points about why they weren't cooled. And the main two reasons why they weren't cooled is that they had delayed transfer. The other one was that a baby was missed with HIE, was scored inappropriately, and we actually had to go back and reassess the areas where the babies were coming from. However, most babies who couldn't be cooled actually fit into the criteria of not qualifying for cooling. And four of them, though they were under, they actually responded well. So we, we cooled them for 24 hours between 2.5 and um, 3.5. Um, this is from my HOD, and he says this like a mantra. We never want to be a barrier to the health of a child anywhere in the country. And there are so many other barriers that we need to overcome. Being a doctor and accepting a child should never be one of them. We should always accept willingly and happily any child and how to improve their health. Um, acknowledgements, thank you. And any questions? So I'm going to ask if we can keep all the questions for at the end, because um, we are running late. Thank you so much, Nicole. Um, and I think that was a really great presentation. I think especially you go back, to back keeping in mind back to basics. Um, and I think we can all um, reflect on the low app scores. So yeah, thanks so much for that. Um,